And welcome to our latest edition of Friday Casual Conversation. We're now joined by the EIU offensive staff here. And if you're looking at the, the Instagram, or I'm sorry, so, so many different social media things in my head. Sorry about that. The Zoom conference here, uh, the offensive staff, we have Coach Kuzieski, our offensive coordinator on the top row, along with Chris Batty, our quarterback's coach. And then on the bottom row, Mark Fillmore, who is our wide receivers coach and also our recruiting coordinator, recruiting coordinator Omar Young, our running backs coach, and then Dan Hernandez is our offensive line coach. So, gentlemen, thanks for, for taking some time. I know you guys are – you would think that people's general thought right now is that you would not be busy in the, the work-at-home environment. And, and I think in, in some instances you may actually be more busy now trying to kind of put some things together, not only keeping yourself engaged and, and moving forward, but also keeping, you know, the players that you coach engaged. Who wants to start off there? Whoever wants to go. Yep. No, there's no head coach in this session. A lot of times everybody defers to, to wait for the head coach to speak. So if, if you want to have uh, Coach Coos as the de facto coach on your side of the ball to, to designate people, or you can just jump in as you want. Go ahead, Coach Phil. You got him, man. You looked eager on it. <laughs> I mean, I like to think that um, the number one thing that we wanted to try to make sure we um, we still took care of is stay, stay in a routine in regards to whether we were – in Charleston or at home. That's the one thing we wanted to make sure we did with our guys and wanted to make sure we wanted to do with our, uh, as a staff as well. So the first thing when everything kind of went down, uh, we wanted to make sure we do is to, it's just construct the calendar. So that way each of us as a staff, offensively, as a football staff, we can stay in a routine. So ultimately if we're in a routine, we can hold our guys to a routine as well. So that was the number one thing that we wanted to do is just, is just make sure we had a routine each and every day so we know when we, Shut our laptop at the end of the day that we felt accomplished in regards to that. Now, one of the things I think you guys were able to do, and, and you've taken advantage of a lot of the new technology, Zoom has the advantage that I only have these group meetings like we're having, but, but to do breakout rooms. And that's probably very important when you talk about football and the fact that it can, mm -hmm. while it's a team sport, it becomes very compartmentalized in your different position groups. And how have you guys been able to utilize those those types of situations and what's been the reception from the guys in your groups? Yeah, the, uh, the virtual, the virtual O'Brien, so to speak, was, a, was an unbelievable idea from, from the top down and something that, that coach Cushing and the, and the operations staff was able to research from some other top programs in the country. And really it, what's awesome for us as coaches and because we have host capabilities is that any one of us can jump into any one room at any time. So whether we want to go see, whether I want to hop in on the running back room or Coach Young wants to go see the defensive backs or Coach Batty wants to head into study hall or the head coach's office, wherever you want to go, you're able to do that with a click. And I think it's just what, what's cool for us is just you just continue to get the interaction that we're all missing. And we all are one every single day to see the kids' faces, whether they play for us in our position group or they don't, uh, and just continue to create that connection that, that's been the number one goal of the offseason to keep that the main goal. And so that's what's been really nice about Zoom. Uh, and, and the capabilities within it um, to kind of move around and see every position group. And I, I'll piggyback on that, just kind of to, to tie both of those things that, that Mark and, and Kuz has said is, is it gives us a sense of normalcy, man. Like when we're at O'Brien, we can easily go in the study hall and go check on the guys, or we can easily go to Coach Cushing's office to go check on him or answer a question or ask him a question. So. It gives us the same capabilities to kind of do the same things that we would do on a day-to-day -day basis that, that makes things nice and easy. Yeah, along with uh, obviously meeting with them from a football standpoint, you know, uh, Coach Phil touched on it, you know, in terms of creating connections and staying involved with our players every single day. Uh, academics is right at the top of that list. And with reading week coming up, and finals week, you know, approaching that, uh, those are also part of our uh, touch points with our players is making sure they're staying on top of their academics, uh, whether it be study hall with uh, Rashid and his staff, right, or uh, just meetings with us, making sure uh, that they're turning all their assignments and taking care of what they need to academically. Now, the other thing that, that you talk about that, and you guys – Unique on your side of the ball, when I talk to the defensive staff, this will the question will change a little bit for them with you guys all five were on the staff last year. Some of you have some connections even prior to, to Eastern Illinois. 
how much I know you wanted to be on the field with the team because you wanted to install some things, but how much of, of this, this new reality of not being on the field, have you just kind of worked on maybe fine tuning some of the offensive things you put in last year? I know football is an ever evolving game and you're always going to look to put some new wrinkles in, but you had a lot of veteran guys coming back on your side of the ball, but did it help? Does it help you guys all five already having worked together to where you can now start at step two or three instead of step one where some staffs are going to have to do? Yeah, I think, yeah it, I think it's advantageous that way in the sense that we all know kind of what how each other work and we've been through a season together. I think the thing you have to focus on is that we were a really young group on offense last year. And so the majority of the groups that we have weren't actually here last spring and they've never been through a spring ball. And really spring, what it allows you to do is hit the fundamentals and go down to the grassroots of what you want to be uh, offensively, schematically, individually. And, and this really allows us even now without being able to practice We've taken our what would be an install for one day and we've done it over an entire week to really not just stretch it out because we don't have material, but really get into the details and the levels so that these guys can start to coach it and that these guys can start to present it uh, so, so that they have the true mastery of it. I think the only thing that we're all obviously missing, um, we're like our guys, is just the ability to run around on a football field. That's the hardest part, right? We're all active people <laughs> and that's why we coach not being able to get out there and do it but it's finding creative ways which this staff has done an unbelievable job of to teach them so they're not just sitting there staring at a screen uh every single second of the day now i'll piggyback off that where you talk about being a healthy staff being out there i kind of will go back and forth a little bit here coach cushing threw out that his, his guilty pleasure is uh peanut butter chocolate eggs and he's having to to raid the house with the kids easter candy still and you guys you get to you stuck in the house what are you kind of snacks and things are you having to try to make sure you avoid so you can still be healthy when you, you kind of come out of this whenever this quarantine does end? Vote, put the snacks down, Rich. Put them down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go for the snacks. That's rule number one. I wish it, I wish it was that easy, you know, when you're in your, when your fridge or your, your pantry, you know, is six steps away, it's easy to go get, go get those types of things. <laughs> I, I think the one thing is we, we we just try to stay regimented as much as we can. You know, you build your day. Just like we want structure for our kids, we, we got to have it. You know, uh, you, you got to find time to go work out, get out of the house, uh, go for a run, and uh, just clear your mind, you know. Um, that, that That's the biggest thing, you know. Uh, whether that's every other day, whether that's every day, whether it's during your lunch hour, whatever it may be, uh, you know, get regimented that way, you know. So that's what I would say. It's hard, man. Don't get me wrong. It is hard. <laughs> I mean, like for me, one of my guilty pleasures, I ain't going to say it's guilty pleasure, but I like to cook, man. Me and my wife like to cook. And um, that's one of the joys we get in, in terms of being together. And uh, we don't just like to cook. We like to bake. So that's also a problem. You know what I mean? And so, you know, this, this time now is kind of, like, oh man, let's try this new recipe or let's try this new recipe. And so it's kind of been hard in that regard of, of not being able to do those things, but at the same time, still trying to find ways to, to enjoy doing the things that you do like to do. So um, when it comes to, to food and, and snacking and, and like Coach Hernandez said, and getting a good routine, man. And, and that's what allows me to be able to kind of make new recipes up with my wife. You know what I mean? Just, hey, I know I'm gonna go get this workout in in the morning and and so hopefully I'll be good because of it. I got a, these guys know I got a sweet tooth and uh, I ain't stopping from eating that candy or, or those cookies. As long as I get my work out, I'm going to treat myself. <laughs> Me too, Batman. <laughs> Coach Phil, Coach Coos, either one of you guys, or are you, you guys more disciplined? Nah, man, awesome. don't, don't ask them. <laughs> Them the two, nah, man. Them two cats, man. I have my uh, – there's times where I'm as strict as can be, and there's times where it doesn't matter. I'll eat every piece of sugar, you know, sugar that's around. So, it's just a – it depends on the time of the year <laughs> for myself. During the season, I'm definitely probably eating a little bit more sugar. Um, off, You know, off season, uh, you know, I have a little more time on my hand. I can dedicate myself to, um, you know, working out a little bit more and, and – can truly try to cook a little bit healthier than you would during the season. So I try to stay away from it at that during that time. But um, for me, just like Dan said, man, if you have a, if you have a regimen, 
in terms of when you want to eat, I try to eat during certain hours. It, it makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, to really be, be able to focus in, so you don't you find yourself, you know, walking to the fridge and eating on something, you know, something you shouldn't be eating. Yeah, the, the hard part for me right now, I'm up, I'm up in in Libertyville at my parents' house. I've been up here for I don't know ten days or so. It seems like three months. Not because <laughs> not because I'm with them, but because it's just been the same thing. But um they have bigger sweet tooths than i do i don't have any sweets in my house back in charleston and mattoon so i don't have like the the urge to eat it but here it's everywhere so it's been a lot more difficult for me i'll tell you that much i've i've been I, i've eaten way more sweets in the past 10 days than i have in the past two months because they're just there so that's the hard part so when i return to mattoon this weekend it's going to be be a little bit better for me and then the other thing that you guys have done and i um it's been great that you've been able to put these things away. And I think part of it is the fact that, you know, some of the, I don't want to say celebrities, but the, the greats that helped build the program in, in a lot of different areas, not only the ones have gone on and had success in football, but in, you've had some on there that done the professional world. They have, they have some time to, you know, share their wisdom with your, your guys. I asked the, the first group today, kind of, they all bring different personalities and different things to the table. What one or two guys, have kind of stuck together with you either based on the type of personality that they've had or the message that they've imparted. I, I know a guy like John Yurkovic's on there and he's going to have that big boisterous radio Chicago personality. And then, you know, Sean Payton has that very dynamic, you know, presence that, uh, about him. Have there been one or two of those guys that have kind of stuck out to you during these conversations that, or a message from one or two of them that you guys have really resonated home with you? I think for me, uh, they all have been fantastic uh, to, to connect young with old and, and bond, uh, you know, our tradition, right? And so, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, each and every guy has a great message and it applies to everything in life and football and, and everything that our guys are doing. Um, and so that's tremendous uh, just to get a chance to, uh, link up with those with, with those alumni and have them interact with our with our young men um, but all again you, you can't just say, you can't say enough the, the, all the all their messages have been great and, and apply to every aspect of whether it's life or football whatever it may be they, they all have something that you're going to take that you're going to write down that you're going to save and, and it's going to mean something to you so Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for me has been um, making sure that the guys understand that this place is special, man. Like, And like he said, every one of them has done a great job. But at the end of the day, man, this place is like no other, man. Like, it's not a lot of places that can go around and, and tote the amount of alumni that we have, you know what I mean? And, and especially being at the FCS level. Um, I think it's something that the guys are really starting to understand and be proud of and, and take pride in. And, and the other thing is, it's just like he, he mentioned before, is connection. And, and that's kind of been our main goal this, this off season is connection. Um, and we've had the opportunity now to connect the, the past and the present um, and taking that a step further of just, just making sure that we understand where this program was started and, and how it was built. Um, and, and understanding where we need to take it and get it back to. Now, you, you talk about the, those names, and I, and I know this one will hit a little bit more for, for Coach Fillmore as the recruiting coordinator, but all of you guys, I know, do your share of recruiting by either by position group or by, by region. We always use these types of things, the, the names you talk about, a Sean Payton, a Mike Shanahan, a Jimmy Garoppolo is, hey, look, they got – to the NFL or this elite level playing it at Eastern Illinois, the FCS at one time, Division II, it can happen for you. Now this has becomes real world, I think, like you, you said there, for a lot of these guys. How do you now parlay this into something from a recruiting standpoint, especially in this, this current environment where everybody is having to recruit really kind of the same way, but then you're trying to really kind of separate yourself out from the other people that are having to recruit in this, this new normal? Well, I mean, I think the first thing that we do before we even get into um, the greats that we're able to stand on here at Eastern is uh, we talk about the relationship aspect of it. And the more um, that we can build with the young men when they're looking to make those decisions, 
then they can truly be able to take the information that we're giving them and the opportunity that they will have here at Eastern and be able to take that and truly be able to, to really kind of digest it and say, you know what, not only will I have a great relationship um, with the coaching staff here, um, with the players here, with the staffs, different staffs here, I'm going to be able to have an opportunity to live my dream in terms of potentially playing in the NFL. So you use it. We, we talk about first relationship aspect of it and then be able to give them that information in terms of who has been here, who are we, you know, who are we we're following to be able to continue the, the, the code that torch. Um, and then as we slowly digest it, and sometimes, you know, a lot of times just for the fact, the pure name, especially, you know, the guys in the area, we don't even have to say it. They already know it um, in terms of who has been here already. So that alone um, holds a lot of weight, but we build a relationship first um, that, as they see it, you know, we, I think we do a pretty good job with our social media, um, that they see it. And, um, it, it means a lot to the young men, you know, especially if, you know, we're, you know, recruiting a quarterback. Um, but the thing about it is it's not just quarterbacks that we've had here that have been great. There's, you know, you talk about O-line and D-line, you talk about corners, you talk about receivers, you know, you know, there's been, you know, we talk about QBU, but there's, there's the guy on the other end that's been able to catch a lot of those passes. So you look at it, um, out of all positions, we have somebody there that's well that's been well represented um, in the next uh, next level. So um, we wanted to give them everything that we can in terms of opportunities and here at Eastern, and I think that we have that here, and we just use it by everyday talk and building that relationship with. Them. I think one of the things you guys have done a good job of is you've tried to keep the them engaged, and, you, and you've done it in a structured environment. You have some academic time where where you meet with them every day. You have some some position group meetings, but you've also tried to, you know, keep that sense of family and that camaraderie away from those structured environments. I saw one of the things the other day is you guys had a, looks like a Madden tournament amongst all of your teams. So which one of your, I guess, out of you five would consider yourselves to be the best Madden player? And then who's your go-to Madden team? Yeah, I'm retired. I was, I was in the uh, Nintendo Hall of Fame. I'm retired, though. <laughs> I got that gold jacket. <laughs> Certainly, I mean, I, I stink at video games. <laughs> I don't have a new system at all. Um, I literally have a system where you can play all the Sega and Nintendo games, so that's where I'm at. I've been looking to dabble in, you know, maybe getting a new Xbox. One of my coaching buddies has been trying to get me to buy one to, to jump online with them. Um, but I, I've been shying away from it because it's going to deter me from doing what's, what we need to do best, and that's recruit. <laughs> Coach Young, it was it me or you then? They all they all waved the white flag. I don't know, man. We 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 can we can get on the sticks and see, I guess. <laughs> all right. You, you might you be know, You know, it's one thing I've never done, and that shied away from competition. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I played I played Xbox for the first time in years uh, one month ago with my nephews, and I got back into the Madden. It's kind of like riding a bike. Mm. So I was popping wheelies by the end of that thing, but. <laughs> i say if you were talking, you know, some cards or something like that, dude, then it might be a different story. But now you, you talk about that. Cards? Have you got? Have you guys? You talk about that. I, I know the Madden was good, and the kids are, are into the Xbox and, and the Nintendo, the PlayStation, those types of things. Have you found other ways to kind of it, in, engage your guys? I know Coach Cushing. I think on one of the the coaches' meetings, he found through Zoom or through another app that there was a way for him to play, you know, spades or or euchre or something like that with with some of his, you know, college buddies and former teammates. Have, have you guys found some uses for other technologies to, you know, engage in those types of things, either one with your teams or with, you know, former teammates of yourselves? Coach so, Hernandez, you talk about what you did yesterday. Yeah, it's it's every Tuesday we'll do a trivia Tuesday and and all that is we'll just we'll visit a website that that I found and and every every uh, you know, every Tuesday will be different. This past Tuesday we did Star Wars trivia. And the, and the kids love it. You know, you got the background music playing. You get a wrong answer, you get a boo. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So, uh, and then the week before that, we did uh, the Tiger King trivia, that new Netflix. <laughs> the kids love that, you know. Um, and so, uh, so yeah. So, we, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it fresh. We'll mix it up. Um, you know, we won't, we won't, you know, keep it in a, uh, you know, structured way. We'll mix it up to where it's fresh and, and, uh, you know, they're enjoying being with each other, so. You said Coach Kush has went before already? Yes, he has. 
Oh, well, then I won't say what I was going to say. What I will say this <laughs> is, is he put us on – he came in the running back room, but he put us on on, on the, the, the card game you, you were talking about. So we, we've done that as a running back room. Um, we've yet to finish a game for the lack of one of somebody jumping off the game in the middle of the game. So it's hard to, to have bragging rights in the dang on running back room, but that, that's, that's where we're at right now. <laughs> Some some creative strategy by somebody there that was probably losing yeah, yeah, when they jumped yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of the deal when you you probably played Monopoly back in the game, and when you knew you weren't going to win, then it was just time to go to bed or something else came up. No doubt. Now you, you talk. Uh, Coach Hernandez mentioned Tiger King there. I've I've been able to avoid that um, distraction. I know it's kind of one of the social media things, but. Something along those lines, has there been a go-to series or a show that you guys have found yourselves guilty of? I know you're, you have structure from, you know, eight to five during the day, but you, you didn't got your nights and your weekends. Is there, a, you know, a series or a show that you found yourselves now guilty of binge watching? So I've been on uh, a binge watch Queen Sano. Great show. Mm -hmm. um, and then right now we're on Money Heist. That's a good one. Money Heist is a good one. Another good show. It's a like good it. one. Yeah. So where you at, Coach Batty? Oh yeah. So I, I finished up Ozark. Uh, ah. great show. And then all the recruits have been talking about All American, you know, in our in our uh, phone conversation. So I just binged that uh, the first two seasons there. That was fantastic. You thought it was good? I did. I, I couldn't get past the, the football. When they pan to the football, I, I couldn't get past it, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Some of that stuff is fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you touch on recruiting there, so I'm going to kind of ask you that question. That You guys, for the most part, were done with your class that would come in as, you know, freshmen and transfers. There's always some four-year guys, other, other type of players that, that would join during the summer for the fall. A lot of, I guess, the spring would have been getting guys that you're trying to evaluate for next year's class. How has that been taking place? Uh, have you guys, the ways you've been doing that, have, have you had people be receptive, realizing they can't come for on-campus physical visits? And then a, a side note of that is a lot of times, you know, on four-year transfers, those guys become available based on they went through spring ball and they found out, you know, I'm going to be quarterback number six on a – you know, a five-man depth chart, that didn't happen right now. So, you know, are, are a lot of those players available or or is that a little bit different than it has been in past years? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk so Coach Phil doesn't have to pat his own back. Uh, but, but Coach Phil had an unbelievable, unbelievable plan as far as it's unprecedented times as you man it. You talked about right now it's dead period to at least June 1 and probably past that. And so you're right, there's no, there's none of us getting to go watch guys work out and there's none of them getting to come see us. And what, what we have better than anybody else is people, right? People in tradition, they can't see that. And so Coach Phil had an unbelievable plan. That's all I'll speak about because I don't want any competitors potentially talking about knowing what the heck we're doing, but it was a great plan. It's one that we're still going to enact and do a great job with and do a great job with the follow-up. Um, but as far as the transfers go, yeah, you're right. There's a lot, of le there's a lot um, less roster attrition because there wasn't that spring competition. And that's the same thing with uh, with us. We, we we won't probably have maybe guys also leaving and coming in. So it's a lot more static that way, which is fine. We love the team we have. We love the team we've recruited. We're good with with, with who's on campus. We feel like we can win a lot of games with those guys. Now, one of the things that, that I'll kind of ask you is you've been in your house for about four or five weeks. I know you can get out a couple of you guys. You're back home visiting family. But – what have you? What do you kind of miss from the the normal that you've been able to do on, on a regular basis that you'd like to be able to get back to, to to a daily routine? For some of you guys, it may just be as simple as going up and working out at the gym, as opposed to having being creative at your own house. I'll say, you know, I actually just saw one of my good buddies from college. Um, he had put something on Facebook and says, "Hey, everybody has that one friend that you don't have to say anything to. You can just see each other and just start just busting out laughing." And I think that's probably probably the biggest thing that everybody will say is just that that social in that face to face interaction where you know I don't have to say anything to Coach Batty. I just look at him. He's just like, "Bill," and then like we but we already have that connection, or it's like I can say something that you know I say something to Dan because I know the doors usually shut in the morning. Uh, when he, and he's in there grinding away on something in terms of a new graphic course. Like, I already, like, I know what he's doing, and I could just put my head in there. It's like, 
oh, I'm cooking up some heat fields, come checking it out. And like that, those little things that you just miss, you know, in terms of, um, again, I think that's why the virtual Brian is so key in terms of what we're doing that you still have that quote unquote, just run down to the office and say, hey, real quick. And everybody's fall out laughing and you leave and go back to your, your, your office, you know? So that's probably the biggest thing for me is it's that quick little bump that just gets you through that day where you might feel in a little eyes, a little heavy after lunch. And um, a coach comes to your office, says something, so you start laughing and you, you catch your energy back and get back to work. Any of the rest of you guys, I know when we talked to coach Cushing before, he didn't say this on the air, but we, we talked about it before that barbers and you know, hairstylists are going to be some of the most essential people when this thing is all done because most of the, most people don't want to be a stay-at-home barber. And so I think being able to get out and see one of those may be very essential. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coach Hernandez cut his own hair. Coach Batty shaved his off at one point in time. I don't know. I'm going to look like back. by the time this thing is done. But, uh, this yeah. All you need, Rich. You miss. This all you need, Rich. You see that? Whoa. There you go. He got Whoa. his clippers. I think the other thing you miss, like, and this is weird, but it's probably the same thing our guys miss. It's like a lot of the staff is really active and we're in the weight room together or we're in the rec together. And it's just working out alone is not fun. Um, and it's a lot mental. And it's our guys probably miss the same thing. You, you just you push each other to be better and you just get a little bit of inspiration from somebody else that you're working out or you're seeing uh, in the in the rec or the, in the weight room. So that's to me, that's the one thing is just like, I've just been like, all right, I'm dying to work out with somebody else. And uh, <laughs> that's how it is. Now, the one I'll, I'll leave you guys here on this one, one more for, for all of you. And uh, however, what order you want to go in, I'll let Coach Kuz decide the order because he may want to think of his last. Is <laughs> I was watching on TV last night, they had the Grammy Salute to Prince, which kind of made me think of, uh, of music and kind of what what has been your – I guess the song or the artist that's kind of been the theme song going through you through your head as you've you now been stuck at home for for a month or working at home for about a month. The let's go crazy kind of came to my mind from from Prince last night. And that's what, you know, stirred me to that one as, as I was watching that on TV. But and I had a much different thought when I when this started, when I did these with track about a month ago. And that one was the REM. It's the it's the end of the world. And I feel fine. But now that you've been in the house for a month, it you may not feel that same way. Coach Batty, you get to go first, man. All You're right. Really inclined one. Uh, so, yeah, I, Tom, I'm a big Tom Petty fan. Uh, so um, that, that's what you can find me listening to uh, when I got some downtime. Coach Phil, what do you got? Man, it's been a lot of lullabies over here uh, <laughs> with, the, with the new newborn. So it's been me making up songs on my own to, to rock them goodnight, or that's kind of <laughs> been my, my MO over here lately. Coach Young? Uh, I mean, I've been kind of listening to a lot of stuff. The things that's kind of like sticking in my head are uh, really some of the sidebar side bar games that we play um the little intro music and stuff that are kind of going to those because we do them so often <laughs> <laughs> those are the kind of things that are sticking in my ear right now so uh that's what i'll say right now this is my thing coach hernandez what do you got mj oh shoot <laughs> <laughs> it up Surprised nobody went with the last dance as their uh, guilty pleasure that they, that they've been watching because I think everybody has, has mentioned under, that they... that's understood. That's understood though. Everybody <laughs> yes. in here is watching that thing, and, and, and that's all we're talking about on Monday. That's understood. Uh, for me, uh, I heard it this past weekend, and it's like just to remember that there's going to be better times. It was uh, Zach Brown toes in the water. So someday we're going to get the heck away from this and we're all going to be together and be happy and all that. And it's keeping that positive perspective. That's kind of what I've been, what I've been thinking about. This too shall pass. Very true. Well, I thank you guys for your time. I know it, hopefully everybody will be able to get back and you guys will be able to have your in-person staff meetings and engage with your, your players and colleagues in a face-to-face -face manner here in, in the near future. I appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you. Oh, appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you guys. Stay safe, man. Yeah.